All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of World with Ty Brownlow. I am your host, Ty Brownlow. Remember, no one is worthless, no story is worthless. Today, ladies and gentlemen, do I have a very special guest for you. All the way from the West Coast, best coast, L.A., L.A., y'all know that's where it's at. Man, please put your hands together for Mr. Mark Gordon. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here talking with you, Ty. That was an amazing entrance. I kind of need that every day. Like, I, that's how I want to walk out of the house every day. I feel better. <laughs> hey, man, you know what? You have just given me an idea. I think I'm just going to make that into my own little personal, uh, oh, God, I can't think of the name of those things, but you know how you can, like, have Tone Lokes send you messages or, you yeah. know, the stars send you messages. Yeah, you know what? You're just giving me a gift. Come on. I felt like you were, like, Michael Buffer. Like, I was getting ready to like, get out and just do something. Hey, you know, hey, he gets paid a million a pop to say, you know, let's get ready to rumble. So, hey, I would oh, yeah, take that yeah. any day. All right. But, no, man, look. Comedian, singer, songwriter, talent, you know, man, like he does it all, ladies and gentlemen. And we're here to talk all about Mark Gordon, okay? So let's just get right into it if you don't mind. No, it's one of my favorite topics. All right. <laughs> so, man, you have a new album called Center Stage. Can you please tell us all about this album? Yeah, so Center Stage is something that I, I worked on um, during the pandemic. And so I never really did a song. The, the first time I did it, uh, I used to do this rap when I did stand up in like in the early 2000s. And the, the, the rap that I did was about all the rap songs, everyone's acting all cool. And I was like, there's no dorky songs from, from the suburbs. So that was kind of the, the first song. And it, like it, it kind of went like this. If I'll do a little bit. Like I find my gunshot without hesitation every time I play my Pony, my Sony PlayStation. I got this lady. She makes me like every single day. Damn, I wonder what Grandma wants anyway. So it's like that cheesy cheese ball stuff, and I just loved it. So like I didn't do anything until like 19, and I hate Donald Trump with a passion. So I found the best way um, instead of like you know going on and posting and ranting and stuff people don't pay attention. The best way is using comedy to do that. So I, I had this video called Diaper Don where I had uh, Donald Trump in a, in a diaper and I'm pretending I'm like rapping like him. And I had like Sarah Huckabee and all these other characters. So that was, that, that kind of got it going. And I got like a bunch of views and I found that using comedy was the best way to spoof this guy, not to go and like preach it down your throat to laugh. And even people who kind of supported Trump were like, all right, all right. I, that's funny you know like so i found <laughs> that was the best way so i did another one about um mitch mcconnell mm -hmm. and then i did another one for bernie sanders i was a big bernie guy and i kind of rap it was really funny because the style I was rapping was like chuck d and it just so happens i just saw bernie was coming to town in la and chuck d was gonna go there and perform so i was like yo this is crazy i was a huge public enemy fan and so i i, I did it like say anything john kuzak I walked around the convention center I, on my, my phone and my Bluetooth. And so then I, I got people from the crowd and they were in my video. So anyway, so those are my three things. And then after Trump lost in the election, I was like, I gotta do happy music. So then I did social distancing, which was about living in the pandemic. And the same thing, like we're all stretched out, uh, stressed out, it was in 2020. We didn't know what was going on. And the concept of that video was um, you have these, this guy, which is me trying to um, hit on this this one girl, and this guy's got all this money and other stuff, but I have a hoard of toilet paper and hand sanitizer, and that's good as gold. That's better than, than money or gold. And, and that was my concept, and, and I was shooting like a 90s r and I had just like the leather jacket, shirt open, like the toilet paper chain, and just kind of like, that was my style. Not really singing, but like kind of talking, going through there, a little Jodeci action going. And then, <laughs> and then, um, and then after that, I started working on like EDM stuff, and that got me to center stage. So I, I started working on all this different music, and um, and then right before I was like sending friends this music, and I'm like, ah, I went back, I want to do an album. I'm like, I don't know if these other songs really uh, were what I want. So I retold them, and then I started to do some. I had some original songs. Um, 
And then I started doing remixes of all these people that I really admired. And that was that center stage. Sorry, I'm talking. <laughs> so I, I did one. Um, the first one I did was Eminem Revisited. And I did three Eminem videos. I was uh, his, I was in the first, The Real Slim Shady, The Lookalikes. And I did two of his photo double. And here's a funny story, okay? So I had that comedy rap that I'm telling you, it kind of goes circular. And when I did that, um, the, the video, it was like Dr. Dre was there. Um, Paul Rosenberg, his manager and stuff. And I, I was so like, at the time, ballsy. I, I was going around like Def Jam West. I was knocking on Ice T's door, like, yo, let me do this. So like Dr. Dre was there and I walk up to Dre. I'm like, I want to do this rap through. And he gave me his card. And I just moved here. I don't know anything. I'm young. And I was like, yo, Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre gave me his card. So I remember I, I went back and I call, I leave a message. And then I'm waiting for Dr. Dre to call back. And then people call me, you have to go Dr. Dre can call me back. Dr. Dre never called me back. But in my mind, I'm playing all these different things out. Like, yo, if Dre calls me, I gotta be ready. So I'm like practicing, trying to write some new stuff. Anyway, so that was uh, that was my experience. So I, I wanted to kind of touch into that whole Eminem experience. There was a, the other video was like Eminem was rapping um, to like me and him were in the car together, and he's supposed to be rapping to himself, but it's really me. So I was there for like days. So I was like, all right, I want to do a song. I took three Eminem songs, I edited them up. I made all new beats and then kind of flowed that way. And then I was like, okay, who else do I like? Uh, Bob Marley. So I took three Bob Marley songs and this kind of goes to what you were saying. So Bob Marley, so a couple of the songs and this kind of gets into where I'm using music to change. He talks about, and I'm a history guy. So um, he talked about coming over slave ships, mm. being enslaved, using music to free your mind and I thought, especially with all the stuff with critical race theory being the attacked Republican, I was like, okay, the same thing as Donald Trump. Let me use music, because you're not gonna listen to me, you know, talk about it and lecture you. But if I use Bob Marley and you hear it over this theme, it makes you think a little bit like we need to really change the way we look at different people. Mm. Mm. Look. Sorry, I ran, I ran on for a Oh no, minutes. look here, look, yeah. man, look, let me just say this, you know. A, let me just tell y'all a little bit about, you know, Mr. Gordon over here. Now, I know he's out in L.A. in L.A., and that's where it's at, but originally from Philly, okay? So when I hear you talking about, you know, P.E. and, you know, certain concepts, you know, Bob and culture and things of that nature, I, man, I look, everybody knows we're here in Chicago, but... Philadelphia, seriously, is in the top five of my favorite cities I've ever been to, you know. And, of course, I've, you know, caught the train from New York to Philly, you know, dozens of times or what have you. But I just love the cultural references out there. And, you know, just for you to, like, you know, just say what you said, you know, just about, you know, being transparent about everything that's going on. And you're not, you know, like, hiding anything. Like, look, this is what it is. I don't like this guy because he's like a broken clock. He's only, you know, right twice a damn day. And, you know, look, I want to take this over here and just your experiences or what have you, man. Look, that's what's up, bro. Like, swag, man. You know, like, I'm getting the swag over here, man. You know, like, yeah. I mean, I'm feeling the smoothness. You know, don't let the smooth taste fool y'all about Mark Gordon over here, okay? My man, a little rough around the edges as well. Okay. All right. <laughs> but no, but let's talk a little bit. You know, because you talked about social distancing in the video, and I've seen the video, ladies and gentlemen. It is on YouTube. Go to Mark Gordon on YouTube. You will, man, you can see it for yourself. And yes, he's on there. Man, like he's giving you a little Drake too, you know, with the hot light bling, you know. I mean, just a smidget, but I mean, he's giving you that too, you know what I'm saying? Because he's, seriously, he's not joking when he's talking about the toilet paper gold chain, okay? Like, it's real. Okay, all right, but you, man, for that, you won LA Live's best comic video, man. Like, how did you feel about all that? It was awesome because I, it was last year. So for a couple years, I wasn't doing anything. Like, I was just kind of locked in my little, my spot here. So it was great to get out and, and network. And then to see yourself on the big screen, you're like, Oh, that's kind of trippy to see that, you know? Because you're used to this computer screen, you know? That's all we've been doing for, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Hey, look. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Oh no, it, it, it was it was really nice to be um, to be you know given that award because that's that's basically what my whole thing was is trying to blend comedy music and and you know make a, an impact that way. Okay, okay. Now look, I didn't read your bio. I've seen your videos, and I'm gonna go a little old school here. So you know, for my people that understand, I'm gonna bring it around. But man, like you sort of reminded me of Weird Al Yankovic. And for those of you who are like, well, who the hell is Weird Al Yankovic? Man, go to YouTube, Google him, Yankovic. Y-A-N-K-O-V-I-C. Yeah, go holler at him, all right? And I believe that's H at the end, Yankovic. Okay, sorry. Um, but, you know, he's done a lot of parody songs in the 80s, especially with Michael Jackson, Eat It. Um, you know, I'm fat and all that, you know, um, I lost on Jeopardy, you know, my personal favorite song, I lost on Jeopardy, like, oh God, anyway, I'm just showing my age, sorry people, but, uh, but you know, like, you, like, man, like, it sort of put me in that vein, and also, if I'm, basically, if, if I'm gonna bring it current, um, Mark Revlet, and if you don't know who Mark Revlet is, he's also another YouTube sensation, Man, you see him in his house coat. He's banging out beats, singing, going wild or whatever. But, I mean, man, like, just that style, you know, like, you put me in the mood of that. And you're not them. You are you. You have your own style. But let me just ask you, like, growing up, like, what type of comedy did you, you know, listen to growing up? And how did that inspire the type of comedy that you do today? Oh, that's a great question. I, um, so here's, here's an interesting thing. My, uh. My grandfather, we we would go to Atlantic City a lot, and back in like '80s and '90s, you would have um, all these amazing comedians that roll through, like old school ones, um, like uh, um, Buddy Hackett. Oh man, why am I blanking on the dude? Oh, Don Rickles, all those people. So I was like a young kid seeing these people, and I'm like, wow, this is it's crazy. Like this old dude is like making all these people like, all right, that looks cool. I'd like to do that. So I got to see the old timers, and they had all the timing down. Those guys, the Jackie Masons. And then growing up, though, my guy was Robin Williams, by far, Eddie Murphy, my other guy. So those two guys were like my favorites. I remember in school, I mean, this is really going to date, but you probably had this. We had the old film strip, you whoop, turn, and I had the cassette. Whoop. So we would always put like the Eddie Murphy, Robin Williams in that when the teacher wasn't looking. So it would just go off to that. Hey, yo, hey, look. Yeah, you just took me back, you know, I mean, but no, man, bro, but no, like, that's what I'm saying, and, you know, like, even with those two, Robin Williams, his stand-up, like, I know he was, I know they have this concept called physical comedy, you know, he was very physical, you know, very, you know, hands-on, this, that, or whatever, but even some of his, like, his stand-up was nothing like his acting, you know, like, it was none of that. Like, Robin Williams got raw. And uh, oh. Eddie Murphy, come on, man. Like, yo, what more can I say? Like, it. I'm just going to keep it real. If you grew up in any urban area in the 80s and 90s, Eddie Murphy was your hero, okay? Raw, delirious, what have oh. you, you know, great movies all over, trading places, 48 hours. Man, look. Yes. Yes. Those two are my favorites. And then Beverly Hills and then Boomerang, like all that stuff. And Robin's, all his movies and stuff. It was just like, those are the guys, you know, in the in the 80s and stuff or like 90s were like. And incredible. I'm going to yeah. say this. Shout out to Don Wrinkle. Shout out to Jackie Mason. Man, look here. Like, you named some like heavy hitters, man. And they, you talk about timing and concepts and things of that nature. Oh, God. Jackie Mason himself. Like, I used to listen to Jackie Mason. And I'm not, I don't want to date my Star Search, you know? Like, I used to watch Star Search back in the day. Ed McMahon. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all we had. Hey, that's all we had, people. I'm sorry. We didn't have, hey, whatever. But, uh, but no, you know, like, man, okay, man. Those guys were, yeah, those guys, like you said, the timing of those of those old guys, because they would, they, you know, they would kind of do the same act over and over again, because there were there was no, like, YouTube. So their timing was, like, impeccable. That That's what, that's what drew them in. See, you know, man, I'm feeling very Johnny Carson-ish right about now. You know what I'm saying? Because that's yeah. our, man, look, that's our era, 
All right, you know, like I grew up watching Johnny Carson. Like I was probably the only black kid on my block that watched Johnny Carson. But I had my own TV, you know what I'm saying? So right. I could watch whatever the hell I want. So between Benny Hill and Johnny Carson, yeah, I got a mix of some of everything. So oh man, Benny was Benny was great. Oh god, yeah. Well, that's a show for another day, and that's probably some yeah. kids watching. We won't talk about that right now. Okay, all right. <laughs> but no, um, I want to talk about a quote that I've heard you use, and I just want you to elaborate on it just a little bit. You say your mission is to use comedy and music to create awareness, educate people, and remove the blindfold to hard-hitting topics. Can you just elaborate a little on that for us, please? Yeah, um, so growing up, I kind of, I grew up in, in the suburbs, and I when I went to college, I was like, I want to get away from that homogenous you know group of people all the same people so what i did is i started taking like latin american history history of arab israeli uh, afro-american history women in history so i was always the minority in in those classes and i liked it because i, I was like yo everyone should be doing this because if we're only taking stuff that we're familiar with we're not learning about other people once you learn about other people, then you, then all the other stuff, the obstacles and the other stuff that, that goes in between can get tear down and you realize we're just all the same, trying to do the same thing. And we could end like a lot of the, uh, the racism and animosity towards people. So like I was saying with some of, my, some of the music, um, that is a way to, to break through that, you know, because, um, for some reason, musicians and entertainers were kind of at the forefront. If you look at like how social change was, you know, throughout history, it was, you know, those people, entertainers, musicians, right? Like Muhammad Ali or Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, or, you know, all those guys were able to use that, um, that platform. So I kind of looked at that. And then when I was doing the album too, I was listening to a lot of uh, Lin-Manuel. And I was like, okay, let me study Hamilton because now he, you know, he brought, that history, which I liked, that people should know about, but then he also mixed in a whole group of ethnic people to kind of break through that stuff. And I was like, that's the way to do it. You know, like he's a superstar and got people listening. So that's that was always been my philosophy ever since I was like a teenager. Hmm. Okay. Innovative people, innovative, visionary. All right, man, look, I mean, because look, you know, I. First and foremost, let me just say, I think it's dope that, you know, when you went to college, you took all these classes that you, let's just keep it real, sometimes white people just don't take, you know, and I mean, you know, not to, you know, play, you know, sides or whatever, but yeah, you know, but for you to take these classes and to be the minority in there, but a sponge as well, like, man, look, I'm not just here to get a credit or whatever. I really want to know you know, what's on this side, you know, of the fence, you know what I'm saying? Cause all I know is this, you know, and I know it's more to life than just what I see every day. There's a whole big world out here. And like, even the music, you know, man, Marvin Gaye, James Brown, Stevie Wonder, even some of the people you're talking about, Muhammad Ali, you know, like all these people who fought for like change, social change, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, man you know like hats off to you you know for that bro and like i mean i know like we're talking about comedy and doing all these things or what have you but yes there's still a message in the music you know that you're creating and yes it's comedy but there's a story and there's a message in the comedy as well so i'm just not up here trying to get yucks and laughs and all that no i'm really trying to open eyes and i'm trying to get people to see hey you know don't let this, as I said before, don't let the smooth taste of Bar Gordon fool you, people, all right? It's a little, it's a little bitter over there, all right? You know, like, man, we got some bitters, okay? All right, like, ugh, you know, it'll grab me, okay? So let me ask, where can people, like, watch your videos and listen to your music? So um, if you go to YouTube, Mark with a C, uh, S. Gordon, you'll see it. And I have a, I had a new video out for the new album. It's called Funktastic Lounge. So it's, I basically took like 19, I made a whole 1970s beat. And then I took 70s TV shows 
and Soul Train. And I have me dancing with all the people from the 70s and Soul Train in, in mixed in, cutting back and forth. <laughs> and, and that was like a fun intro song. And I, it's funny you say James Brown. I did the song like talking to the band. I, I did like a couple lines and talking to the band. And, and, and I also had a song with James Brown and Miley Cyrus I sliced together. So it's pretty funny that you brought him up. Oh, James Brown and Miley Cyrus. I would have to go back and take a look at that. But, you yeah. know, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, if you know anything about James Brown, when you look at the band, you know there's a story about when he looked at the band, he will always check to see who was on beat. And if you wasn't on beat, yeah, that means your money was dropping, man, smaller and smaller and smaller by the minute. Like, man, you had to stay on beat. You had to watch James. If you didn't, oh well, you know, there are stories. Can I just mention one thing about James? Because if some of the young people want, because all right, if you look at a guy who was an innovator, and I don't think he's given his due now, he kind of like James at the time, yes. But um, but if you look at that era, people weren't doing what he was doing. They were kind of standing around, just like da -da -da -da, maybe doing like a little Motown. Of, but James was like, no. And he just went in like a hurricane and just blew up the place and no one has ever seen it and i would still say him and maybe michael jack the two best frontman energy guys ever so young kids please go watch james brown you will be blown away blown away okay like mr dynamite yes that's exactly what, yes mr dynamite boom yes your mind will be blown trust me yes all right um Man, look, so if people want to follow you on social media or website, email, what have you, how can they get in contact with you? If you go to uh, Instagram, it's Mark Gordon. Facebook, Mark Gordon. Basically, Mark Gordon. I made it nice and nice and easy. And I got the, the album will be coming out the end of this week. So I got 18 songs, some new sketches and videos. Look. And a new talk show that might come out as well, a cannabis talk show. So, Ooh, okay, hey, well, man, we might have to call you back for the cannabis talk show and talk cannabis while oh, having okay. cannabis. Okay, all Thank right, you. no, but uh, <laughs> but no, look, let me just say, a very refreshing to hear somebody say, I have an album and not an EP, not a single, but an album. There are 18, you say. 18, 18 songs. 18 yeah. songs, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, look, let me just talk to the new school for a second, okay? I know we like things, you know, microwave and popcorn, and you just want it right here and now, just stream it, stream it, stream it, stream it, stream it. But, you know, that was really a time when you had to sit and listen to a whole album because you liked one song on that album. And sometimes it was hit or miss. Sometimes that one song would be the only good song on an album. But hey, you live and you learn. And sometimes you may make a B-side song, you know, your song. And like, hey, you know what? I know this is crap, but hey, you know. And I know being a Philly guy, I know you, I don't know if you are really a Roots fan or so, but you may oh, be yeah. a Roots. Okay, yeah. all right. That, see, there you go. But there was this guy named Dice Raw. And he had an album, and he had a single off that album, and I thought the whole album would be just like that single, come to find out it was not, okay? So I felt that pain, ladies and gentlemen. I got caught up in that. But something tells me, Mark Gordon, Mark with a C, y'all, Mark with a C. Man, no, like if it's anything like social distancing, oh man, we're in for a treat. We're in for a treat. So now look. This brings me to my last question. This is the question that my show is known for, so I'm about to present it to you. Mr. Mark Gordon, what is the one word that best describes you and why? Um, goofy. Silly. <laughs> I, I, I always like to um, not be too serious for too long. Um, I'm, I'm probably trying to try to look for a joke uh, might be inappropriate, uh, might be borderline, crossing the line, or, but that's that's kind of what I like. I try to try to get someone kind of laughing, and 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 uh, that makes me happy and at ease. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Look, punchy, it's punchy people. All right, man. You know, sometimes it may sneak up on you. Sometimes it may be light. 
Sometimes it may be heavy, but it's still punchy at the end of the day. So that's my word for you. Punchy. Mark Gordon's a punchy guy. All right. No, man, look, I really enjoyed this. Um, as I said, center stage, people, okay? Mark Gordon, all platforms, even on YouTube, correct? Yes. Mark yeah, be on, I'll be on everything. Mark yeah. Gordon, okay? Mark with a C, M-A-R-C, Gordon, okay? Go check him out. Go check out that social distancing video plus all his other videos, man. I'm telling you, it's funny. It's funny, okay? Look, y'all know I wouldn't cheat you to beat you, okay? It's funny, all right? But, man, look, I thank you for being my guest. I thank you for coming on to the platform, brother. This has been, as my man Don Cornelius would say, this has been a stone groove, you know what I'm saying? And uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, man, this is Word with Ty Brownlow. I've been your host, Ty Brownlow. Remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. Follow me, all social media platforms, at Word with Ty Brownlow. Or you can go to my website, tybrownlow.com. Get this wonderful interview, plus other great interviews. Mark Gordon, we out. Peace. Thank you, guys.